everybody, it's Wagai. How you doing? Today I'm playing some sector control on uh, Novigrad Warzone with my buddy Dalton Hicks. He does YouTube commentary too, so check him out if you haven't yet. I'll put him in the description. Uh, his tagline is the average gamer, uh, but I actually think he's well above average. That's more uh, close to reality. Maybe he was average when he started, but now he's actually pretty damn good. Uh, but I didn't want to mess up his image, so I showed around where he was playing very average, and I'm doing pretty good. Actually, I believe he was trying out the sniper class this round for one of his first times, if not the first time, so that probably explains his uh, very average, uninspiring score. <laughs> but anyways, for the most part, we were playing for a better part of the day, getting in a lot of time together, and we were running things pretty much, number one fire team over and over again, so... This was one of those games in that session, and I think it was pretty entertaining. I'm definitely getting much more comfortable with the game and how it feels and how it plays. Uh, up until uh, the day of this video, the game, the servers were running pretty damn inconsistent. Like, you'd be in a server that was running really nice for you, and the very next round it would run absolutely terrible. It's just up and down. You really, you don't know what to expect from round to round. But it finally sort of stabilized on the, uh, the day of this game. And we, we were able to play for most of the day with uh, relatively uh, low problems of lag or uh, that sort of stuff. So with the servers finally stabilizing a little bit, EA's been kind of bumping up the back end, working on it a little bit over the past few days, several server updates. And the, the difference is very noticeable. And with that stable environment, I'm able to learn a lot faster because consistency in how the game plays and fills is very important in learning how to take advantage of things. and and get better. And as they continue to work on the server back end and get rid of various bugs that are in the game, things will only get better. So I'm real optimistic that the gameplay experience is going to continue to improve very nicely. Now at this early stage in the game, I've taken a liking to the Assaulter class. I use the standard weapon uh, in the class that you start with, the uh, M4V1, as I've found out recently by looking it up. And uh, by default, this, this class was like okay, but the the gun had a lot of recoil, and it was kind of undesirable. You know, I made some complaints about the gunplay in the game. But uh, I changed the attachments around a little bit, and lo and behold, this gun is now extremely stable, very accurate, it's good at medium to, to decent range, and uh, okay at close range as well. So I'm liking this class, and this is a class I'll probably stick with for a while while I learned the basic flow of the game. Now be careful not to overlook the attachments that I just mentioned because I cannot possibly overstate how much of a change it can make in the fill of a gun just to change one of the attachments. It could literally uh, be the difference between a gun being a total shit gun that you'd never want to touch in your life to being your favorite god gun that you just can't stand not to use. And I gotta give full credit to Obin himself as he's, you know, creditable for many awesome things for discovering uh, these attachment differences. Oh, that's a nice little kill with my grenade launcher on that helicopter. But yeah, I gotta give him credit for figuring that out and mentioning it in a video before anyone else I had seen because I know once I saw that I, I said, alright, I'll play with the attachments a little bit and I made a change in the receiver grouping of my weapon and, and just fully crap. I mean, night and day, night and day basically. And uh, the game's gunplay went from being like kind of sloppy and, and wandering all over the place to, you know, pretty consistent and predictable and comfortable, and uh, it's all because of changing those attachments, so make sure that you play around with them yourself. Now I've had a chance to play the game a little bit. I feel like I've put in a decent amount of time, uh, around seven hours, I guess, of game time, which is enough to kind of get a general feel for what the game offers and how the multiplayer works. So I feel like I'm ready to give my review for the multiplayer, and I would say right now with uh, all the bugs present and all the problems that I've complained about I'd give the game about a 7 out of 10 and once they squash the bugs, uh, not necessarily the game design elements that I've complained about as well, but just squash the bugs and I'd give it maybe a 9 out of 10. It's, it's a really good game uh, it may not have seemed like I was loving the game because of my previous commentary where I talked about the faults of the game and the things I wanted to see improved but that's not true at all. I, I, I tend to criticize things that I like because they're close enough to some version of perfection that if they could just fix those things then it would be the greatest thing ever so I'm gonna be all over the faults and hope that they get fixed and if they are like wow that's amazing but if, if not if they don't change the gameplay design uh, a little bit like I wanted 
that's okay. The game's still very good, very entertaining, and I think I could play it for a while. Uh, they just gotta squash those bugs. Some of the strong positives of the game uh, so far are the map design, the graphics, the game modes, the guns, the attachments, and the, the vast uh, offering of, of classes from different nations. I think that's really cool that they did that. The big negative so far is that red outline. I mean, I hope that they shorten the time that you see the red outline to just uh, like a flash. If you notice it as a, a buddy of a guy that got killed, fine. You get that flash. It gives you some idea where someone is. But no persistent, you know, three to five second red outline so you can wall hack your way to victory when you didn't earn shit. There's also a, a bug with the red and green outlines in the game. If you're playing on ultra mode on the PC, the highest graphic settings, that outline doesn't exist. This this is happening with Meowth and I. That's why you haven't noticed it in our videos. And we determined it's because we play on Ultra with all the graphic settings all the way up. Uh, there is no red outline. It needs to be fixed so it works, obviously. We don't want to have to turn our graphic settings down to high just so we can have the red outline that everybody else gets to use. So please fix that, guys. More negatives, obviously, are the bugs. There's a, no a lot of bugs still in the game, quite a few. And uh, also the collision system restricts creative thinking on the maps. I mean, you can't hop on simple rubble, uh, a rock here and there. You should be able to get creative and, and like try to find different paths through the map, not just run through the, the two or three different paths that they obviously lay out for you. you. You need to be able to climb over simple obstacles, and that's just terrible that you can't. I don't know if they'll fix something like that, but they really, really should make an effort to because it makes all the difference in the world. One more negative I haven't mentioned yet is uh, it takes too long to grab a sector if you're by yourself. And uh, yeah, I know they want to promote team play, but a lot of people just will not be team players no matter what. So they need to shorten the length of how long it takes to get uh, the sectors as a single guy. Things I didn't mention are kind of in a mixed bag area. They're not good. They're not bad. They're somewhere in the middle. But overall, I'd like to say that I do like this game. I highly recommend it if you're a fan of FPS shooters like this. Pick it up. I don't think you'll regret it.